Good morning, Everett Chapel. It's uh, good to be with you this Palm Sunday morning. Um, wish we were gathered here. I can, uh, as I look out down the uh, uh, down the aisle here, I can see our young folks coming in uh, this morning, laying down the palm limbs like we always do, uh, as we remember that triumphant entry of Jesus into uh, Jerusalem uh, during this Passion Week, uh, and we're so thankful that our Lord and Savior was willing to go in. Um, in that weekend to take our sins upon him. Uh, but before we get into the message this morning, we do want to take a few minutes and we do want to uh, make a few announcements. Do continue to give to uh, uh, your local charities and uh, don't forget the blessing box here at the church. Uh, also, we do want to extend a uh, thank you to those of the church that um, are very faithful in tithing and uh, we do appreciate your giving. It does help uh, keep things moving around here, and uh, uh, we do thank you for that, uh, being faithful to God. Um, we do look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Uh, this cannot last forever because we know the God that is able uh, to get us past this and through this, and so uh, it's not going to last forever, and uh, we do uh, look forward to the time where we can see you once again. Do remember all of those that are sick. Let's remember to continue to pray for our healthcare workers, our doctors, our nurses, the EMTs and paramedics, the firefighters, the police officers, uh, all of those that are on front line that are uh, working and serving the community right on through all of this. Uh, let's do remember our nation and our leaders in prayer. Uh, but we do want to remember also uh, to lift up one another in prayer. Uh, I tell our folks all the time, y'all have heard me say it, uh, it was not a suggestion to pray one for another, it was a command. And so we, uh, we pray one for another. Uh, but we do, uh, we do look forward to the day when we can come back together uh, and worship. And um, I'm going to go ahead and continue to encourage you because it's going to be a day of celebration. It's going to be one of those times where we're just going to celebrate Jesus. Uh, but we do want to remember this week the sacrifice that was made uh, for each and every one of us. Uh, so uh, at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Join me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the place. We thank you for the opportunity that we have, uh, Lord, to come into your presence today. Lord, I know it's not the way we would want it to be, uh, but yet at the same time, we know, Lord, that where just two or three are gathered, where we gather with you and your spirit, Lord, you guarantee you'll be there with us, Lord. Worship is, a, is an experience, Lord, that we can have anywhere in, in your presence. And Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to, uh, uh, to open up your holy word today. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that was made that we celebrate this week on our behalf, Lord, where our sins were covered, and Lord, we were given the opportunity uh, to live with you forever when we leave this world. Lord, lead us, guide us, and direct us. Lord, do please, please, we ask you, Lord, to bless those that are, uh, Lord, on the front lines, that are in the hospitals, that are on the streets, Lord, that are tending to the sick and the suffering. Lord, we pray your hedge of protection around them. Lord, we just pray you be in the midst. We pray for all of those sick in the churches today. We pray, Lord, that you just would watch over, that you would keep us, you would guide us, you would direct us. And we'll be ever so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for all things. For Heavenly Father, it is in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Again, it is good to be here. It is good to be able to come to you. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that are probably getting cabin fever, but uh, I encourage you to open up your word, open up your Bibles, study the word of God, read the word of God, spend time with God, and spend time with your family. What better opportunity do you have than right now? Uh, this is... Uh, great opportunity for us to grow, grow closer to our Lord and Savior. But as we open up the service this morning and the Word of God, then we open up into the book of John. John 17. 
I know you thought we were probably going back to the Bible study, but we're not. Uh, but we're going to open to John 17. We're going to be dealing mainly with verses 1 through 5 for this morning. So join me wherever you are. Open your Bibles. Open your Word. Uh, join me for the reading of God's Word. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify your Son that your Son also may glorify you, as you have given Him power over all flesh, that He should give eternal life uh, to as many as you have given Him. And this, this is life eternal, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth, I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify you me with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Let us pray a blessing upon the word. Heavenly Father, we pray your blessings upon the reading and expounding of your holy word. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, may every word spoken be yours. And may our hearts be touched by the bread of life. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen and amen. We find here in this very moment in time, we find as Jesus is nearing that moment that he will sacrifice for us. We celebrate this week his entry into Jerusalem. What, what a wonderful thing to do this week to, 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 to celebrate that entry, we were so unworthy of it. We were so unworthy of the love that Jesus would demonstrate for us. But yet at the same time, he loved us so much that he was willing to go the distance. He was willing to go to an old rugged cross for a sinner like me and you. What a wonderful thought. You know, to me, this is Passion Week. Because it was passion, it was love that, that carried Jesus to the cross. It was love that, that, that on that third day raised him from the dead. And it's the love of Jesus even today on this Palm Sunday. It's the love of Jesus that still reigns true in this world. We're still able to be forgiven by the sacrifice that was made. But in this very moment, in chapter 17, Jesus is praying a prayer. Now, I've, I've had a lot of time to, to spend going through the Scriptures, and, and I've come across many of the prayers that Jesus prayed, many of those moments that He spent with God in solitude up on a mountaintop. I've been reading through those, and each and every one of them are, are applicable to us today. They apply. Because you see, He is our Father too. We need to be praying. We need to be in prayer. As I said, I've found much time here lately. Most of the time it's late at night. I don't know about you, but things around my house have changed. There's people there all day long. During my study hours, I'm not alone anymore. So I spend time at night when everybody goes to bed studying but it's important that we spend that time with God and I say we're still it's important that we spend that time with our families also but Jesus here in this prayer he starts out with that father the hour is come he was at that very moment that prophetic moment in this in his life in this ministry he was at that prophetic moment where it was time it was time for him to be that sacrifice, to be that sacrificial lamb. But his prayer was that God would glorify him. That he might glorify God. You see, going to the cross not only took our sins to the cross, but it also magnified and glorified God in everything that God would do. Because you see, his glory would be shone upon the Son, and the Son would continue to give the Father glory. 
Brothers and sisters, that's what he does for us today. I don't know about you, but I'm blessed every day. Even in the midst, even in the midst of a pandemic, God continues to bless me and my family. He continues to bless those around us. He will continue to bless His children if we will be faithful to give Him the glory as He blesses us. Jesus entered into Jerusalem knowing at that very moment when He entered in where He was headed. He was headed to an old rugged cross. An old rugged cross for me and you. For you see, he knew no sin. But yet he became sin. And died so that we could be forgiven. What a magnificent, what a magnificent love that God has for his children. Father, glorify thy son that thy Son also may glorify thee. You see, the thing that we need to remember is that the Scriptures tell us of glory. Tell us of glorifying. The psalmist in Psalm 50, verse 15 says, And call upon me, God said, in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. You see, church, I hear people all the time Nobody is more ready to get back into church and have people to preach to, have faces to look at, have other than a camera than I am. But we forget that we don't have to be right here in the church to worship. We don't have to be right here in the church to be praising God. You see, we are the temple. We are His temple. We need to remember that we carry the praise and the worship with us. Even though we can't do it collectively right now, we can do it individually. We can praise God. We can glorify Him. Nothing less than what Jesus' prayer was, was that God would continue to glorify Him, that He might continue to glorify God. You see, in your times of trouble, He says, I will deliver thee. You see, the thing that we need to remember is is that we are His temple. 1 Corinthians 3.16 tells us. He says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? He dwells in you. He dwells in me. We are the sanctuary. We are a place of worship. We are a place of praise. And we're here for nothing less than to give God the glory. You see, Jesus, all he wanted in his prayer was to make sure that people around him, that the disciples around him, that everybody understood that it was the glory of God that they were seeing in him. Is that not what we want, brothers and sisters? Is that not what we want is the people around us to see the glory of God in us? That we might give him the glory? Because you see, it's not about me and you. I keep telling, I, I have that, that's a, that's a favorite saying about, of mine. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. This whole week is all about Jesus. It's all about what he did for me and you. And verse 2 tells us, he says, As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Power over all flesh. The significance of that is is that Jesus Jesus had the ability. He had the ability not to go to the cross. He had the ability not to die. But yet, because of His love for you, because of His love for me, because because God so loved the world, He was willing to go straight to Calvary. He was willing to die. You see, it tells you how much He loved us. All power over all flesh. He had the power of God in Him. And He should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given Him. 
what he offered to us that week, what he offered us on that cross that day was eternity. He offered eternity to us. He offered a chance for us to live forever. I don't know about you, but that excites me. I don't know why it doesn't excite the world. Why it doesn't set Christians on fire. That the power that Jesus used, the power of God to bring eternal life to man. His love. His love for us. Matthew 28 verse 18 gives us that glimpse. He says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He had that power. John 10 and 18, Jesus said, No man hath it life from me, but I lay down my, myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Jesus said, No one has the power to take his life, he gives it for me and you. What a sacrifice. An unblemished lamb. But yet at the same time, he gives us power. John 1.12 says, Jesus said, But as many as receive him, as many as receive Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We have power that is given to us by Jesus through the way of the cross. It's given to us to be the sons of God, the daughters of God. And Jesus tells us that he has all power. And this is life eternal, he says. And this is life eternal that they might know you, the only true God. There's only one God. Brothers and sisters know that. There's only one God. He's Jehovah. He's known as Elohim. But He is the one and only true God. The God of Israel. The God of Jacob, Isaac. He is the one true God. He is our God. Jesus says, all I want you to know is I want you to know that eternal life comes through me from Him. From the Father. You have sent, He says. Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, he acknowledges, brothers and sisters, that He came. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever would believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I don't know about you, but I like the fact that I can count myself as a whosoever. I can count myself as one that believes. I can count myself as one of those that Jesus came for. I was in this prayer. He says, let me glorify you that I might give eternal life to those that will believe. What a, what a powerful message we see. Eternal life to those that will believe. John 3.15 That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. An eternal life with the Father. I don't know about you, but, but I'm looking forward to a day when I get to heaven. I get to see the Father. I get to see the Son. I get to worship. Won't have to worry about no viruses or no pandemics. Won't have to worry about any of the things of this world. Won't have to worry about the flesh getting older and breaking down. You see, eternity with God means that our time stands still. Eternity does not have a calendar. Once we're in the presence of God, 
It's all that matters is Him. And Jesus says, I want to give you glory. I want glory to shine through me that I might give you glory and that they might have everlasting life. For God so loved us enough that He sent His Son. In verse 4, He says, I have glorified you on the earth. And I have finished the work which you gave me to do. It's an indicator that he's coming to the end of his ministry. Coming to the end of his life here on earth. He was made flesh so that he could die for me and you. But he died a spotless lamb. He died an unblemished lamb. This Palm Sunday, we celebrate that triumphant entry knowing that at the end of this week, we'll celebrate the triumph of God over death. Knowing that next Sunday, we'll celebrate the fact that He's alive. You see, the thing that we need to remember is that this was a prayer that Jesus was praying to the Father. Church, I'm telling you, we need to be in prayer now more than we've ever needed to be in prayer. I've heard more talk about the last days in the past four weeks than you've heard in a long time. Could it be? Yes, it could. But we remember that the Scriptures tell us that no man knows the hour of the Son of Man's return. Not even the angels in heaven. Only the Father. So we remember that, but at the same time, we look at all the markers. We look at everything that is going on around us. We look at the death and the destruction that's happening. And I'm telling you, our King is coming. I'm telling you, He's on His way. I'm telling you, He's not far off. This is not one of those doomsday messages. That's not what it's going to be. This is a message of victory. Because you see, we are victorious in Jesus. Because of His victory on the cross and in the grave. Because of His victory. Because He was willing to go the whole mile. Brothers and sisters, we are victorious in Him. Hell, death, and the grave has no power over the children of God. He gave us power to be His children. He gave us power to walk after Him. Walking in the footsteps of Jesus. But He goes on to say, I finished my work. I finished the work you sent me or you gave me to do. Brothers and sisters, there's coming a day when we're going to finish our work. As the children of God, we have... We have a work that we need to be doing. We have a work that we need to be about. We need to be about our Father's business. Go back and read these prayers that Jesus prayed because they will apply to you today. As He prayed to the Father to glorify Him. It's not about mine and your glory. It's about the glory of God. Our prayer should be, Lord, use me. That prayer of Isaiah. Use me. Here I am. Use me. Send me. Let me be. That you might be glorified, Father. I finished it. I finished the work you sent me to do. And now, O oh Father, he says in verse 5, Glorify you me with your own self with the glory which I had with you before the world was. That's an indicator of Jesus going back to where He came from, going back to the right hand of the Father. He's our intercessor today, brothers and sisters. He's our advocate. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's seated beside Him, interceding for me and you. He left the glory of God to come to this world for me and you. He left basking in the glory of heaven and the glory of the Father to come to this world for me and you. And at the least we could do is celebrate it. 
Celebrate this week His entry. Celebrate everything that God has done. He did it for me and you. He did it because He loved us. He did it because He first loved us. We love Him because He first loved us. What a magnificent prayer Jesus was praying. And how it can apply to us today. You see, the thing is, is that things are not normal right now. Things are not the same right now. But the one thing that is true, the one, the one part of this whole world that, tra- that stays true is Jesus. The one part of all of this that is going to stay is Jesus. God said he was the same, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's always the same. He never changes. And he's still our God. No, we can't do what we want to do right this minute. But there's coming a day when we will. Because God is true and faithful. He's seen us through other things in this country. He's seen us through things in our lives. I can go down a list and name the people in the church that he's seen through cancer and that he's seen through heart attacks and that he's seen through strokes. I can go down the list and show you that that God is able to deliver us from COVID-19. But we're going to have to get serious about our prayers. We're going to have to get serious about praying. We're going to have to get serious about giving God glory. Because the one thing that he responds to is praise. The one thing he responds to is worship. And again I say, you don't have to be right here in the church to worship and praise him right now. We look forward to you worship and praising with us when this is over. But right now you are the temple of God. You can praise and worship him wherever you are. Right this minute. You raise your hands. You give Him praise. You give Him glory. And you see what God is able to do. Because He's able to deliver us. He's able to bring us out of this. He's able to set us free. Glorify, He says. Glorify me, thy son, that I may glorify you. Do you consider yourself a child of God? If you do, then you need to be glorifying God. You need to be praising His holy name. What does it mean with all of this going on? It just means that we have to go through each day. He's the one true God, remember? The one true God. And give you a scripture just as we draw to a close. In 1 John 5, 20. The word of God says, and we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true, even in his Son Jesus Christ. That is, this is, he says, the true God and eternal life. You see, He lives and dwells in us. And because He lives and dwells in us, we know that He's the one true God. And we're guaranteed eternal life. One glory. Not multiple. It's not for my glory. It's not for your glory. It's for His glory. Jesus was saying this. In John 10, 30, Jesus just says these words, I and my Father are one. Can you say that today? Can you say that you are one with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost? Can you say that you are one with Him? Because that's what we're supposed to be as the children of God. That's what we're supposed to be each and every day of our lives. Celebrate this week. We do miss you. And as I said before, it's heartache it's heartbreaking not to see the kids coming in laying down the palm limbs 
it's heartbreaking not to see your faces. But you see, I know there's coming a day when we're going to be able to be back here. And we're going to be praising God and giving Him the glory. You hold on. You stay safe. And we're going to continue to pray. Give God the glory. Give Him all the glory this week. Because He sent His Son to a cross for you and for me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this place. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the bread of life and the word of God. Lord, we ask you to touch each and every heart. We ask you, Lord, to touch each and every one that has seen this message today. May God be honored and glorified. May the name of Jesus be magnified. And most of all, most of all, may all the glory go to you. You are our heavenly Father. You offered your Son so that we could have eternal life. Lord, I pray for each and every one that's going to witness and hear this word. Lord, may it all reign to their hearts. May their hearts be reined in. May they come and draw closer to you. Lord, lead us, guide us, and direct us. Lord, we're going to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For it is all yours. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you on this Palm Sunday.